motorcycles are definitely one of the most beautiful ways to see the world. Along the way, riders always seem to find the most curvy roads, the best restaurants, the coldest beer, and the most interesting destinations. And I've learned that the best way to find them is to simply ask the ride. That's why I asked over 750,000 of you who follow me on social media to cast your vote on the absolute best. This is Motorcycle Destinations. Wheels Through Time Museum is home to a world premiere collection of rare American motorcycles, memorabilia, and a distinct array of unique, one-of-a-kind American automobiles. In today's video, I'm gonna welcome you all to the Wheels Through Time, maybe one of the most iconic motorcycle museums in the entire country. This place is absolutely littered with all types of motorcycles, and many of them being timeless classics. And I only found it fitting to ride my new BMW R18 out to such an iconic museum. I have filmed here at Wheels Through Time in Maggie Valley before, and it's really one of my most favorite places, and I can't wait to film this episode on motorcycle destinations. There you go, look at that. No more did I do than walk through the front door, and there to my right sat the XR750 from Evil Knievel. This is a one-of-a-kind bike. Oh, man, the Evil Knievel. Sportster, look at that thing. That is a timeless piece right there. Too cool. Hey, how you doing? Good. Matt. Matt, this is Matt from Wheels Through Time, man. Nice to meet you, my brother. Pleasure. My pleasure. Hey, my name is Matt Loxler from Wheels Through Time Museum. I'm curator here at the museum, a mechanic, um, kind of do it all guy. A couple of the key things here at the museum: everything's American made, and they all fire up and go. So every bike that you're going to see today, minus a couple. Uh, we'll crank up and run. You caught one of the best ones right off the bat. That is an amazing bike. That, so this is his last jump, and what did he jump King, on? I think last jump was King's Island. King's yeah. Island. Yeah. And this is an XR... It's an XR750. 750. And this, as we know it, and documented, it's the only bike that was actually sold to Evil. Or the one that was, the only one that can be documented is sold to Wow, yeah. what a piece. Wrecked it once. Uh, and then made the 14 buses on this exact Oh one. my god. Do you have any idea what a, what a, what a bike like this would be valued priceless. at? Priceless. priceless. It really genuinely is priceless. It genuinely is priceless. We like to kick it off with something amazing right off the bat when you walk in the door. I've literally got goosebumps. Yeah. Look at the seat. That is just really rad. How oh, it's got the piping, the white piping, and the red, white, and blue, and the tank. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. One awesome motorcycle. Can you imagine two coil springs in the back jumping 130 feet? I can't. It's like it bounces <laughs> you right over the top every time. You know, monoshock was a darn good idea. Too cool. So you want to see the inside, man? You came a long way. Let's let's go. So how often are things changing here at the museum? If I came last year. How many things would be different this year? It's a good question. You know, things change almost on a daily basis around here. We're still out picking bikes. We're restoring motorcycles in the restoration shop. Things change in here literally every single day. It's been a few years since I've made it through Maggie Valley into the Wheels Through Time Museum. And uh, I'm glad I came back because every time I walk through the door, there's always new machinery out there and new exhibits. So uh, what I'd really like to see is, I know there's so many bikes here and, and, and you know, but you gotta have at least three favorites. I got favorites around every corner, but I got a couple picked out, we'll go check. Do your favorites ever change or are these your all time favorites? Favorites change every day. There's some of those core bikes that I'll love and love forever as much as anything. And then at, at the same time, there's new ones that come in and bikes you just get running, bikes you found in cool ways bikes my dad and I restored together um, so there's there's you know, stuff from all all different aspects of, of this museum and favorites around every corner all right let's see your three favorites as of today all right let's go Matt has a deep history when it comes to collectible motorcycles so what I wanted to do was just check out his top picks I know what mine would be and and I'm sure they'd vary from a lot of people's but I was curious to see what Matt thought. So one of my favorites is right over here. Uh, and what we're looking at is the Teens Era Motorcycle Collection for Harley Davidson. All of these bikes, original condition, and they all crank up and go. The 15 here is the one I want to show you. So this bike right here, uh, completely original, 1915 Harley Davidson. This bike will run 75 miles an hour relatively easily. Wow. So you wouldn't think 107 year old motorcycle, but this thing honks down the road really well. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 
you gotta, you gotta roll on and snap back. So this bike is not only a 1915, but it's 100% original. That means not restored back to what it would be. That means this is how the bike came out of the factory day one. One of the favorites. So, and like I said, there's favorites around every corner. Of course. Uh, you want to see another one? I would love to. All right, here, let's go over this way. I love museums. I go everywhere and look at them, but I'm telling you, I can count on one hand the amount of museums I've been in where they can fire almost every bike in there, and even better yet, will fire almost any bike in there. So the bike in front of us here, 1917, one of a kind racing Henderson. They were the gentleman's motorcycle, the most sophisticated motorcycles on the road. This particular Henderson is a 1917 endurance racer. It's the only known racing Henderson in existence today. The bike laid up for about 75 years, and that's when my dad found it, and he restored this bike uh, in 96 and in 97 uh, ran a coast-to-coast -coast endurance run on this bike to re-break a record that was set in 1917, same year as the bike, on a really similar Henderson. Did it as a fundraiser for Grand National Dirt Track Racing. He raised about $70,000, I think. Wow. So, yeah, let's crank this thing up. Got kind of an interesting starting procedure. The kicker's a little weak. Sound. That is a beautiful sound, sure like butter. Is. Now, what kind of transmission comes in this? Three-speed transmission. This. this one was built with that special manifold and then these big wide uh, racing gas tanks, quick fill gas caps, kind of a neat wow, setup. Wow, that's and then, super cool. And then you got a three-speed and there's are special levers to accommodate that wider tank. So only one ever built like this and one of the prize pieces here, not just because of its rarity, because it's, it's one that my dad actually got on and hammered all the way across the country. And raised money for a good cause in the process. Raised money for a good cause. Great story, man. The motorcycle story sometimes is almost as beautiful as the machinery itself. Yeah, you're not kidding. It without the without the stories, it's just metal. That's right. Without the human element, it's just metal. And when you know, every bike in here's got at least two stories. There's the story of who rode it and raced it and bought it and sold it. Then there's the story of how they get here and how we find them, and it's all compelling stuff. I really. love it. As much as I love looking at the machinery, hearing its history means a lot to me too. And, and finding out that this was the actual raced bike, and then Dale put some serious history to it as well, this makes this piece special for me too. I can, I can understand why Matt chose it. Okay, so the word is you have what is considered to be by many, certainly arguably, the rarest motorcycle in the world. That would be the Traub, yes. The only one of them ever built, and uh, never was a Traub company. So it's not like a Harley or an Indian, there's only one of. Uh, this is the only one ever made. Can you fire it? Oh, it runs perfect, let's go. All right. Yeah. So it's a bump starter, so it's, I'm gonna have to roll it outside. Tell everybody why this is considered to be the rarest motorcycle in the whole world. Sure, um, you know, Back in the early days, there was maybe 150 early American motorcycle companies all kind of vying for a spot in the industry. What makes this bike so unique, there never even was a Traub company. So you've got many guys out there that made 15 bikes, made 1,000 bikes, made 100 bikes. Uh, this is the only Traub ever built. There never was a Traub motorcycle company, and the most interesting uh, part of this bike story. Uh, it was actually hidden behind a brick wall uh, and then discovered in the 1960s during a renovation job. So for many, many years, this bike was completely unknown altogether. 40 plus years, it was a mystery who even made this motorcycle. Uh, and over the last couple years, we've you know, figured out a large part of the mystery. Wow, that's gotta be a fun hunt connecting the dots and figuring out exactly where a piece of machinery like this comes from. And do we have any uh, idea of why it was hidden behind a wall? That's the part of the mystery that we may never know, and that's that human element. And we know the, the after finding out the guy that built it, uh, he was never married, uh, lived at the same address that the bike was at through 1954 when he died. Uh, we always assumed the bike was hidden uh, in the teen shortly after it was built. You know, there's no pictures of this thing in its day ever anywhere. Uh, we did find his draft card, which was filled out 
uh, in Manhattan in 1917. Now we date this bike to about a 1916 motorcycle, okay, based on a few parts uh, that are in common with other motorcycles. So the seat, the carburetor, the magneto, the wheel rims are the only things on this bike that you'd find anywhere else in the world. I mean, this guy designed and built his own engine, cast the cases, cast the cylinders, machined it, developed his own transmission. The transmission is something that took Indy and Excelsior, Harley Davidson, like cumulatively probably half a million dollars to develop a transmission way back in the teens. This guy assumingly did it in his garage. Wow. Uh, it's so far ahead of its time and, and uh, if you ask me, this bike will stomp all over a Harley or an Indian of the same day. So if the world would have been a little bit different, we'd have a parking lot full of Traubs today. Wow, that's an interesting thought in itself. Yeah. So the thing about this bike right now, I'm going to start it for you. Okay. But the Kickstarter at Mechanism is started to wear pretty heavily on it. So I've got to do some repairs there. The way I'm going to fire it up is we're going to roll it outside, run it down the red brick, and bump start it right off in second gear. So Let's do it. Auto No big deal, just taking the world's most rare motorcycle outside and bump starting it. Other places, it'd be in a glass case, wheels through time, they're pushing it down the hill to bump start it so you can hear it run. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. Too cool. <laughs> That is so sweet. Absolutely, absolutely amazing, man. Yeah, of course. And to think something like this was actually made in a garage by a man uh, at the same time, like you said, factories were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop the exact same thing. Yeah, the world, motorcycle world could have been a very, very different place if this bike would have gotten the right eyes behind it. You know? Man, it just gives me chills. It's one of I the love prized it. possession here at the museum, but you know, what we're standing in right now is all one-of-a-kind motorcycle almost identical to the first bike to cross the united states the yale california over there bike did it before a car did 1903 the indian there in the middle on the table was built and owned and ridden by the guy that founded indian uh, oscar headstrom man thank you so much for uh, showing us some of your personal favorites yes, i can see why you have got one of the most amazing if not the most amazing collection you know i venture to say the best motorcycle museum in all of America, probably the world. You should be super proud, man. Uh, I am uh, excited to be here. And these are all the motorcycles we're gonna walk you through today, but we're gonna end the video with a montage of just some of the beautiful stuff all over this uh, this museum. So let's, uh, let's roll the montage. in here too. Check out these wheels, they're made of wood. When it comes to unique motorcycle destinations, Wheels Through Time is definitely one of a kind. It's a must stop out here on the road if you're ever traveling through East Tennessee or Western North Carolina. It's a beautiful ride in, I had a great time. I think taking this classic looking BMW was a perfect choice to ride into such an iconic motorcycle museum. If you know other places that we should be riding our motorcycles around the country, go on to MotorcycleDestinations.com and upload those listings so that maybe I will film there later and other riders can find it too. Until the next video, we'll see you all down the road.